there is a lot. I mean, first of all, I, I think that people don't make uh, a good use of the resources that the universities offer. Uh, I've seen that a lot because a lot of the times I know people who are sort of struggling to figure out what they should do, where they should go, where there's a team sitting in their university that can tell them all of that and, and walk them through the process. Uh, so first thing would be that if there's a careers team at your university, go and talk to them uh, because they will help you figure out one, what do you want to do, uh, what you're interested in, and two, how you can actually go about getting that uh, that job in that particular field. Uh, and the, the, the other thing is that, and I, I tell everyone this, which is that uh, if you're applying for, to universities in the UK, you're obviously doing it because you want to work here. Uh, well, or maybe not, but you know, if you want to work here, uh, then you should really go for a placement here, a degree that has that uh, a year out, or even if it's a semester or something like that, but it really helps sort of put your foot in the door uh, in, in, in a particular industry. Uh, for me, that was the one thing that really kick-started uh, my, my professional life, uh, so to say, because I chose a company where the, they really wanted people uh, to come and help them out and work with them. So I got responsibilities from day one and I got to actually do a lot of things um, in terms of see how, how the railway works, how, how it can be made better, um, how can I have fun? I mean, I've never driven um, a car in my life, but I have driven a model train. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> you get to do things like that. Uh, so I think if you're coming to the UK, you should definitely go for a degree that gives you that experience for a year or a semester or, or whatever amount of time. Right. So let's now you know segue into uh, life on campus and you know small towns, small cities uh, in the UK. Um, what were your initial sort of impressions and how did that change over the four years you were there? Um, I think the first impression for me was, um, and I think this is sort of with a lot of people, uh, when you haven't been to the UK a lot, uh, UK for you stops at London. <laughs> After London, you just, you know there's Scotland up there, but then what's in the middle just, just goes over your head. Uh, so I think for me, the initial sort of worry was, oh, this is just so far away from where everything is supposed to be because everything's in London. Um, but then, you know, I was I was young and I just thought, I'll just, I'll work it out uh, eventually, you know, I'll, I'll do something. And I, I had that optimism <laughs> of just being out of home and really enjoying the freedom. Uh, so I think um, it was, it's different in the sense that if you live in a student town, uh, you, everyone knows everyone. Uh, and I started enjoying that quite a bit. Um, and I don't think London would have been like that, or I don't think another big city in any other country would have been like that because everything's really spread out. Um, I also got a campus experience, something that, I mean, that London doesn't have, for example, is uh, that buildings are spread out all over the city. So everyone's in corners of the, con of the city, whereas uh, where I studied in Nottingham, everything was in one place so you could actually just call a place your home and be there and spend hours there and days if you wanted. Uh, so I think that was something that I learned over, over, over the, those few years of just that, well, this is actually a student town. This is just, this is a place just for students. And if you're a student, you'll really enjoy it. If you're not, you're always annoyed about, about the students because they're loud and they're always drunk. <laughs> so, yeah. So fantastic. So what, what are the other things that you did to develop, say, hobbies, interests um, in, in your spare time? Is there enough going on? Um, to yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there is a lot going on. There's, uh, there's loads of societies that you can join. There's a society for pretty much everything. Uh, I tried my hand at, at a lot of them, uh, particularly, I think, um, did a lot of um, swing dancing. Uh, during my first and second year of uni. Uh, there's also a bit of um, sort of some movie societies involved where you just go and you watch movies. Um, there was a lot of stuff about music. Um, so there was, um, there are a few societies that would go on like pub crawls around the city. Uh, and sometimes to be nice and festive, they'd go to a different city and do a pub crawl over there and listen to music. <laughs> uh, that, that was something I enjoyed quite a bit. Um, I think that's something about the UK is that uh, drinking is a big part of the culture. 
so a lot of the, the societies that you can get involved in, in are about just drinking and appreciating it. There was a gin society where you just drink different types of gin <laughs> once a week, uh, there's stuff like that, which is obviously it's not to say that there isn't stuff if you don't enjoy drinking, there's, there's a lot going on in that too. I mean, uh, there's a lot of volunteering work, um, so you can do different things. Um, there was uh, also the knitting society that I joined for a bit, uh, which is quite fun. Uh, there was a tea society where <laughs> you drink tea. Uh, so I did a lot of that. Uh, I, I think uh, after second year, my time was sort of, sort of spent in um, just engineering works, like just studying about engineering. I got very uh, invested in that. Um, and uh, I also had a good sort of team of professors that I could get in touch with and I could talk to and discuss things with. So uh, a lot of my evenings would just be me sitting in the cafe, uh, just reading a book, an abstract book about something maths or engineering related, which is what I started doing. So, <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. You know, um, Great Britain is uh, part of the Europe, part of Europe, and of course, mm -hmm. there's so many opportunities to travel and do things. Uh, yeah. But do you think that becomes difficult or just going out of Nottingham itself becomes um, challenging as a student? when you get busy? Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, um, if you drive, it's perfect uh, because you kind of like in the middle. So if you drive, then you can go in all directions and, you know, you'll get there. Um, but otherwise, I mean, you have to take a train out. You can take a train out, but it's sort of like one goes north, uh, one goes south, then one's going to go east, but to a place that no one wants to go to. It's just, a, it's just like a, it's a village um, and that's it. Um, yeah, no, I think London was two hours away. So if you wanted to get out, uh, it was a bit difficult. But if you wanted to travel um, just in Europe, uh, then there was a, an airport right next to Nottingham. Uh, so that worked out. Yeah, that was quite good because, yeah, but that was just for Europe. So um if you want to go come back to India, for example, you'd still have to come down all the way to London or Birmingham and then leave. So, yeah. It's been fantastic catching up, uh, Saloni, and so delighted to do that after four years. Uh, mm -hmm. So thanks for reaching out. And it's uh, going to be uh, fun to just follow your journey through uh, from here onward. Uh, one question about the visa, which you get post-working, post-studying. So it, is it something that you, like in the US, you get for three years or it's indefinite or how does it work? So uh, at the moment, there are, there are two types of visas that you can get mm -hmm. after you complete your degree. So one is the graduate visa, which you get for two years. And in the graduate visa, you can do any job that you want. So there's no threshold uh, and there are no requirements. Um, and the aim of the graduate visa is that you look, you can, you can work in other jobs that, uh, that the work visa wouldn't allow you to work in while you look for a job that can give you a work visa. Um, and then the other visa is obviously the, the tier two, I think now it's called a scaled worker visa now. Uh, so that's the one that, that I've got. Um, and the way it works is that you and the company that you're working with, you can decide on the duration of your visa. Um, so it can either be two years, it can be three years or four years. It's, it's completely up to you uh and how long they think they want you to work for uh i i went with a two-year uh, two-year duration just because um it was very expensive to uh apply for a visa for three to four years just um they want a lot of money basically uh which is why i couldn't do it but it it is possible i mean uh and uh most companies they because I mean, I think I think Brexit has become very difficult and it's made life for people here difficult. But it's it's good if you're coming from India because if the, if you come in, then they want you to stay for a long time. <laughs> they don't really want you to go. Um, and some companies uh, offer to pay for it too. Uh, my company didn't because I work in the public sector, so it's a, it's a taxpayer's money, which is why you have to use it uh, sort of in a good way. But if you if you work in in companies that have a lot of money and uh, aren't in the public sector, then they do pay for your visa from the start to the finish. Uh, it, it's not that difficult, the process. It's uh, especially if you're coming from a student visa, 
it's literally just um you just send a copy of your passport and your residence permit and and then they do everything and that so it's not that difficult uh, and that's it. i mean even applying for a job i know i mean even when i was moving everyone was very worried about what i'd do after i graduate but uh it's not that difficult to get a job in the uk i mean it's you just have to keep doing it and you have to sort of have those contacts in in place you know you need to know your industry and you need to know those things but uh that's sort of for any job i mean even if i was applying for a job in india i'd have to know things about that that particular job and that industry so it's a bit like that and i think you just you just keep doing it just take a couple of if you're applying for a job just take a couple of hours out every week and just send cvs in um and just keep doing it yeah but it's not it's not impossible <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.